welcome back. So, before the break I was talking about the beta management of a portfolio using uh, index futures. One of the situations or scenarios where beta management comes in to be very handy with index futures is when you are talking about or when you are looking at picking up of stocks, choosing stocks in the context of having uh, special information or special knowledge uh, about certain stocks and their expected performance. And this phenomenon is called stock picking. Uh, an investor might be very uncertain about the performance of the market as a whole, but confident that some stocks in his long portfolio will outperform the market. So, while he is not sure about the behavior of the market, he is pretty much sure or relatively more uh, sure at least uh, in so far as the performance of some of the stocks that are there in his portfolio are concerned. So, what is the strat strategy that he adopts? He takes up a short position using index futures. By taking up a short position in index futures, what does he do? It reduces the beta of his portfolio and therefore, by uh, equivalently he insulates his portfolio by uh, two changes in the market uh, performance. If the market rises or falls or there is variation or fluctuations in the market, the, his portfolio will remain insulated because his portfolio has a relatively very small beta and which is achieved by taking a short position in stock index futures. So, a short position using index futures can be used to reduce the beta of the portfolio and thereby immunize the investor from the risk arising from market moves. It leaves the hedger, now this is the important part, it leaves the hedger exposed only to the intrinsic performance of the portfolio, because the beta uh, is small and if the beta is small, the impact of market fluctuations on the portfolio is minimal and as a result of which it is the intrinsic performance of the stocks of its portfolio that would carry the day. Let us do an example on this. Consider an investor who in April holds 20,000 IBM shares each worth dollars 100. The investor feels that the market will be very volatile over the next 3 months, but that IBM has a good chance of outperforming the market. The investor decides to use the August index futures on the S and P 500 to hedge the market's return during the 3 month period. The beta of IBM is estimated at 1.10. Suppose the current futures price for the August contract on the S and P 500 is 900. Uh, the each contract is for delivery of 250 times the index. This is the contract multiple dollars 250 times the index. This is the uh, lot size or the contract multiple. The investor closes out the position in July. Suppose IBM falls to dollars 90 and the futures price of the S&P 500 falls to 750. Calculate the net profit of week loss on the hedged portfolio and analyze it of course. Now, this is the solution. First of all, the number of futures contracts shorted is equal to beta into V s divided by z into V star. I will be explaining the symbols. In fact, I will uh, you can uh, keep this part pending. We shall come back to it in a few minutes. Uh, let us assume that we take a short position in 10 contracts uh, on the uh, on the S and P index. Uh, how this figure has arrived at I will come back to it, but for the moment we take it that we take a short position in 10 contracts to manage our exposure. Net loss on the stock, we have got 20,000 units of the stock, the price has gone down from 100 to 90 and therefore, the net loss on the stock is 200,000. Profit on the futures, please note we have got a short position, this is a short position. And because it is the short position and the prices have declined, you make a profit on your futures position. 10 is the number of contracts, 250 is the contract multiple and the, the futures have gone down from 900 to 750. So, there is a profit of 375,000 dollars on the futures position. 375,000 dollars on the futures position. I reiterate this is a profit because you have taken a short position in the futures. Uh, although the prices have gone down, the futures have gone down from 
900 to 750, 900 in April to 750 in July. Uh, notwithstanding that fact, you make a profit because you have taken a short position. Net profit on the hedge portfolio, therefore, the net profit on the hedge portfolio is how much? Profit on the futures is 375, the loss on, uh, on the stock is 2000. 2000 200,000. So, the net profit is 175,000. This, this is due to stock picking. Let us analyze it further. The percentage loss on the market is 150 upon 900. How do we get this figure of 150 upon 900? The change in price is from 900 to 750. So, the percentage change is equal to 150 divided by the initial value that is 900 that is equal to 16.67 percent. The beta of the stock is 1.1. Therefore, the loss due to systematic risk on the IBM portfolio is equal to 1.1 into 16.67 that is 18.33 percent that is 366.667 dollars. So, this is the loss due to systematic risk. Uh, we, we know that systematic risk is given uh, in terms of beta is uh, and uh, beta is 1.1 for the stock. The change in value of the market portfolio is 16.67 minus of course and therefore, the change in value of the uh, IBM portfolio uh, stock should have been minus 18.67 percent minus 18.33 percent and because their investment value is uh, how much? Investment value is 20,000 into 100. Um, your loss that is 18.33 percent of 20,000 into 100. If that is equal to 366.667. So net loss on the shares is 2,000. Loss due to systematic risk was 366667. Now what is happening? You see the loss on the shares uh, we have found out. We have worked it out is 2 200,000. How do we get this 200,000? Uh, that is and the loss is uh, 10 uh, dollars per share and you are holding 20,000 shares. So, that is 200,000. Now, loss due to systematic risk should have been 366,667. Therefore, the profit due to unsystematic risk is 166667 and profit due to futures is 375,000. That means what? That means the profit due to the futures annuls that loss due to systematic. As you can see, this figures are approximately equal. This figure and this figure they are approximately equal. Why are they approximately equal? Because we have rounded off the number of contracts. So, had we not rounded off the number of contracts, these figures would have been uh, uh, converging even more. And um, the point is that. Uh, the profit due to the uh, due to the futures contract annuls the loss due to the systematic risk, and therefore this loss goes out uh, of three six 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 seven, and we end up with a profit of one double six 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 seven uh, or one uh, one seven five triple zero uh, because of the. Uh, rounding off of the contracts. So, profit due to the futures annuls loss due to systematic risk hence profit due to unsystematic risk remains. This is the figure that I enclose in the box. Uh, of course, I repeat due to the rounding of the contract the actual profit that we have achieved is 175,000 instead of 166667 uh, because of the rounding of the contracts from 9.78 to 10 uh, in so far as futures is concerned, shorting of futures is concerned. Okay. The superior return of the IBM stock could be attributed to some special knowledge expertise available with the investor or access to some inside information at investment time. Since the market would not be aware, this is very important. This is the market would not be aware of such information etcetera at t equal to 0 at the point of investment. It would not have built this special information into the price at the time of investment and hence the underpricing. This is important. This is special, this is intrinsic to the investor. He has that special information. He believes that the IBM would, would uh, perform, outperform the market, perform it much better than the market, and that is why he has separated himself, he has insulated himself from the market, and uh, he has reaped the benefits thereof. 
So, but what happened uh, was that he had the special information, market did not have the special information and because market did not have that special information, market could not incorporate the worth of that special information into the pricing of the IBM shares and as, as a result of which what happened? The IBM shares turned out to be underpriced and, uh, and this particular investor could may take the advantage of that underpricing. Further, market will view the superior return this as random return since the market did not have any information about this particular characteristic. Now, let us look at beta of hedge portfolios. This is very important. We have been talking about beta management. Let us quantify the strategy. We have already talked about the equation, equation number 1 that we have here and this is the change in the value of the investment. This is given by the quantity of your uh, stock at, uh, at investment multiplied by the change in price. Mi now, we have a minus sign here. Why do we have a minus sign? Because the hedge that is the, uh, uh, the position in the future has to be opposite to that of the, uh, of the uh, stock uh, or the investment and that is why we are carrying a minus sign. You could as well work out the same thing with a plus sign, but then you, in the net result you will end up with a minus sign which will show that your uh, hedge should be opposite to that of the uh, 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 primary investment. So, delta i is equal to q s into delta s where delta s is the change in price between t equal to 0 and t equal to capital T which is the maturity of the hedge minus or plus as you may choose, we will go with minus because it is here on this line. So, minus q f into delta f, q f is the position that you have taken in the futures market uh, multiplied by delta f. What is delta f? Delta f is the change in the futures prices between t equal to 0 and the point at which you lift the hedge by uh, closing your position in the futures market. So, the return on investment, return on the hedged investment, please note that this r i is the return on the hedged investment is equal to delta i divided by i 0, where i 0 is the initial investment that is equal to the expression um, when we replace delta i by q s delta s minus q f delta f what we get is the second equation on this line. And now, i 0 is because the futures do not entail any initial investment. The initial investment that we have made in this portfolio i that we are talking about now is equal to the investment in the portfolio itself and not in the hedge. The hedge comprises of futures and taking position in futures do not entail any investment of course, except margins which we are not considering here. So, ignoring margins taking position in the futures for the purpose of hedging does not entail any investment and as a result of which the investment in the portfolio is equal to the investment in the in the primary portfolio or the cash portfolio. So, I 0 is equal to I S 0 where I S 0 is the investment in this spot or the investment itself and not the hedge. Uh, we can write this as Q S into S 0 where S 0 is the price of per unit of the underlying asset at t equal to 0 and q s is the value or is the uh, number of units of the stock of constituting the primary investment. S 0 is the price per stock at t equal to 0 and q s is the number of units of the stock. So, the total investment at t equal to 0 in the primary position in the cash position in the portfolio is equal to q s into S 0. Right. So, this can be simplified as delta S upon S 0 which is equal to what? Which is equal to R S where R S is the return on the portfolio unhedged portfolio. R S is the return on the unhedged portfolio unhedged portfolio. minus q f upon q s and f 0 upon f 0 into delta f upon f 0. This is uh, uh, what we have done here is uh, simply some algebraic manipulation multiplying by f 0 and dividing by f 0 and we can write this expression in the form of the equation that I now put within the square box enclosed within the square box and uh, let us call it equation number 1 here. 
R s minus V f 0, where V f 0 the value of the position, value of the total futures position, value of the position that we have taken in the futures market divided by I s 0, I s 0 is the value of the stop, stop investment, both of them are at t equal to 0 and what is R f? R f is the return on the futures contract. Now, we move to the next slide. Now, using the CAPM model, we can write the expected return on the spot investment on the cash on the unhedged investment in the form of equation number 2 R f plus beta s into E of R m minus R m. This is the standard CAPM formula. And similarly, we can write the expected return on the futures that we have taken that we have uh, taken a short position on in the form of equation number 3. Now, please note that this factor R f here is missing in R in this equation. There is no R f here. Why is this R f not uh, here? Let us understand that. The risk free rate does not appear because futures do not entail any upfront investment. So, there is no opportunity cost for funds tied up in the futures. So, that is the reason that we do not have any R f here. There is no R f here because futures do not entail any initial investment as I mentioned we are not considering margins. So, futures do not entail any initial investments and because they do not entail any investments, no funds are blocked when we make an investment in fund, uh, in futures there is no opportunity cost for block funds and therefore, R f does not appear here. And uh, as far as the total investment is concerned for the total investment that is the hedged investment we have the same expression in the form of equation number for substitute all these uh, expressions uh, into the formula that we have that is that is here r i r i r s and r f and we make the substitutions of these three expressions in terms of the c a p m uh, um, expressions what we end up with the result that we get is beta h is equal to beta s minus v f 0 upon i s 0 in, into beta f and uh, please note the terms here beta h is the beta of the hedge portfolio beta s is the beta of the unhedged investment beta f is the beta of the futures contracts v f 0 is your position in the futures market at t equal to 0 that you have taken for hedging your portfolio and i s 0 is the initial investment value of your uh, exposure so if you want complete hedging, if you want perfect hedging, you equate this to 0 and when you equate this to 0, what you get is V f 0 that is the amount of futures, the value of futures that you need to take a position in in the futures market is given by beta s into I s 0 upon beta f and the number of contracts you have to take is equal to V f 0 divided by V star f 0, where V star f 0 is the price per contract. Uh, v f 0 is the total value of the position that you need to take, V star f 0 is the value per contract. So, you divide the two you get the number of contracts then that is equal to the expression that I have in this square box. For index future beta f is approximated by 1 and therefore, we have n is equal to beta s into the investment value of the unhedged investment at t equal to 0 divided by the futures value per futures at t equal to 0. Let us do an example. Portfolio manager has a portfolio of long positions in stocks valued at US dollars 1.5 million with a beta of 1.50 at t equal to 0 when the S and P 500 index is 1500. He desires to hedge this portfolio for a period of 3 months using S and P 500 index futures with a maturity of 4 months. Here again we encounter that issue, the maturity of the futures contract is not coinciding with the hedge period. The hedge period is 3 months, the maturity of the futures is 4 months. There is no necessity, there is no rule in the rule book that the hedge period must coincide with uh, the futures period must coincide with the hedge period that is not at all necessary. Maybe it, you can say that it is desirable, but that may not always be the case that it is available. The index has a continuously compounded yield of 4 percent and the risk free rate is 10 percent per annum continuously compounded. The contract multiple is US dollars 250. Calculate the number of contracts required. If the index actually falls by 10 percent at t equal to 3 months, that is when you are lifting the hedge 
from its original value, original value was 1500. This is the original value of the index, it falls by 10 percent. So, its value at t equal to 3 months is 1350. Assess the performance of the hedge portfolio, use arbitrage free pricing wherever required. In the absence of data, we use arbitrage free pricing. Now, this is the solution. Let us go through it step by step. Spot value of the index is 1500. We know that that is given. Risk free rate 10 percent that is also given. Yield on index that is Q. Q is equal to 4 percent per annum. Maturity of the futures is 4 months. So, no arbitrage future value of the index that is no arbitrage futures price is equal to 1530.320. How we have got it is shown uh, here. Uh, it is given by F 0 is equal to S 0 exponential R into R minus Q into T. S 0 is equal to 1500, R is equal to 10 percent and that is 0 0.10, Q is equal to 0 0.04 and T is equal to 4 months that is equal to 4 upon 12th of an year. So, when you substitute these values, you get F 0 is equal to 1530.302. The contract multiple is 250 that is given to us. So, the arbitrage fee price of futures at entry is equal to 382.525 per uh, futures and the we now work out the number of futures, the exposure is equal to 1.5 million. The beta of the exposure is equal to 1.5, all this is given data. Exposure is 1.5 million is given, beta of 1.5 million is given, beta of 1.5 is given and therefore, the number of futures contract is 5.88 which is rounded off to 6. How do we calculate the number of futures contracts? That is given by this expression beta, beta of the spot portfolio into V s, V s is the value of the portfolio, beta is equal to 1.5. V s is equal to 1.5 million divided by V f uh, 0 that is the value of per futures contract at t equal to 0. We have worked that out. It is 382575.50. When you substitute all these values, we get n is equal to 5.88 which is rounded off to 6.00. So, this is the number of contract. This is one part of the problem which is solved here. Now, we evaluate the hedge. The hedge period is equal to 3 months. The decline in the index at the end of the hedge period is given at, as 10 percent. So, the value of the index at t equal to 3 months that is when you are lifting the hedge is 1350. The risk free rate is 10 percent. The yield on the index is 4 percent. Now, is the important part. Now, you see you took a position in the futures at t when the futures had a maturity of 4 months. This was 4 months. This was futures maturity and this is the t equal to 0 point. Now, you have progressed 3 months down the line, 1 month, 2 month, 3 month. Therefore, and you are here now, you are here. So, what is the time remaining to maturity of the futures? It is equal to 1 month. So, when we do the pricing using the arbitrage free pricing strategy, we shall be working out the arbitrage free price using a remaining term to maturity of 1 month. Please note this point very carefully. The remaining term to maturity is what is relevant when we are doing arbitrage free pricing. In this case, the remaining term to maturity is 1 month. So, using that, we work out the arbitrage free um, uh, value of the index that is 1356.767. The contract multiple is 250. Therefore, the value per contract of futures contract at t equal to 3 months when you are lifting the hedge is equal to 339191. Therefore, the profit on the short futures contract you remember you got 6 futures contract and you are taken a short position. So, the profit on the short position uh, futures contract is equal to 6 multiplied by uh, uh, let me see that figure from the previous slide. It is 382575 eight two five seven five minus three three nine one nine two three three nine one nine one or two you may take it. So this is your profit on the futures position. So that is equal to two six zero three zero two two six zero three. This is the total profit on your futures position. 
Now, let us look at this fourth position. What does it say? It says that this the fall in index is equal to 10 percent that is 0 0.1. Now, the yield on the index is equal to 4 percent per annum. We are talking about a 3 month period. So, the yield on the index must have generated a return of 1 percent. The yield on the index is that means, you are generating a return of 4 percent per annum continuously compounded over the year. So, because your investment horizon was 3 months over the investment horizon of 3 months, you would have generated a return of 1 percent. Therefore, the market return the market return is uh, it has declined by 9 percent that is uh, is, uh, is minus 9 percent. Although the index has fallen by 10 percent, this is a catch here. Although the index has fallen by 10 percent, the market has generated a return of 1 percent through the yield and as a result of it, the net fall in the uh, value or in the uh, effective return that is generated by the market is minus 9 percent. Notwithstanding the fact that there is an in, in decline in the index by 10 percent. So, if you work out the return on the basis of the index alone, you find you will find that uh, uh, the market return is, uh, is minus 10 percent, which is not correct, because this 10 percent is uh, very much there, but notwithstanding this fall in 10 percent in the prices as, as uh, indicated by the index, the market has generated a return, which could co possibly have been siphoned out from the system uh, of 1 percent. So, the net return uh, on the market in the relevant period is minus 9 percent, not minus 10 percent. So, a risk free rate for 3 months is 0 0.025, please note it was 10 percent for the whole year. So, for 3 months it is 0 0.025, beta is equal to 1.50. So, if I use the CAPM model, I the return on my portfolio must be equal to minus 14.75 percent. How do I get it? I use the for standard formula R p is equal to R f plus beta p into R m minus R f. Everything is known here. R f is equal to 0 0.025 percent, beta p is equal to 1.5, R m is equal to minus 0 0.09. So, in keep putting all these values, we get R p is equal to minus 14.75 percent. The portfolio value V p was equal to 1.5 million. So, the net loss on this spot position is equal to 221250. This is the uh, loss in value of this spot position 14.75 percent of 1.5 million. But what was the profit on the futures? The profit on the futures was equal to 360302. The loss on this spot is equal to uh, I am sorry, the profit on the futures is 260302. The loss on the spot is equal to 221250. So, there is a net profit, net return on the hedge portfolio equal to 39052, which translates to 2.60 percent over the 3 month period. Now, we talk about index arbitrage. Now, as I mentioned, arbitrage free considerations mandate a certain rule or set a certain pricing uh, in so far as the futures or forwards are concerned. What basically it says is that the future price of an asset must be or the forward price for that matter must be equal to equal to what? Equal to the future value of the spot price that is F F 0 must be equal to S 0 e to the power r t. And of course, if there is a continuously compounded yield being generated, then it will be r minus q into t. We use this formula just now a few minutes back. Now, if this equality is violated, then there arises an opportunity for market players to extract risk free money out of the system. And that in fact, pushes the prices again back to uh, makes it makes the prices converge back to this arbitrage free formulation, but uh, not nevertheless 
there can be uh, situations, there can be circumstances where there is some disequilibrium and this equality is violated, but as soon as this equality is violated, arbitrators come into the fray and their actions of extracting profits out of the system um, uh, result in the prices move, moving in such a direction that they tend to that this equality tends to be satisfied and equilibrium is sustained. So, stock index arbitrage quickly. Stock index arbitrage is an attempt to exploit any futures mispricing relative to the index level when futures prices lie outside their no arbitrage bounds, arbitragers will quickly act to realize the near riskless profits by buying cheap stock and selling futures or buying cheap futures and selling stock. So, arbitrage bounds we have already worked that out uh, in the context of futures. So, I will not spend uh, too much time again, but however, the basic thing is if the price in the futures market is more and the equivalent uh, arbitrage free price is less, uh, arbitrage free forward price is less, then what will you do? You will sell in the futures market or the forward markets and you will buy the underlying asset and hold it during the life of the futures contract that is called cash and carry arbitrage. On the other hand, if the futures price is lower and uh, the arbitrage free pricing is more, then what you do is if the futures prices are lower, if the spot prices are higher, you borrow the asset, you short the asset, sell it in the spot market, invest the proceeds and at the same time against the long futures position rather you will receive the asset at maturity and deliver the asset to the party from whom you have borrowed the asset in the first place. So, that is how reverse cash and carry uh, operates. Thank you, I will continue from here.